This is Twit. So, uh, those clever and resourceful guys at the Ben Gurion University of the Negev, uh, the University of Michigan and University of Adelaide, will be presenting their research. And I'm not sure why they're going to bother, but that's <laughs> just my opinion. During the upcoming USENIX Security Symposium uh, 2021 this August, um, yeah, you know, I've been a big fan of their work. Eh, not sure about this one. Their paper is titled Prime Plus Probe Score One JavaScript Score Zero. They said overcoming browser based side channel defenses. So, um, okay, so first of all, here, here's how they explain this. They said the eternal war in cache has reached browsers with multiple cache-based side channel attacks and countermeasures being suggested. Um, oh, and I should explain. This is a, 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 a JavaScript-free tracking technology. So it's a, it's a new way of tracking even if there's no script running in the browser. So they say a common approach for countermeasures is to disable or restrict JavaScript features deemed essential for carrying out attacks. Um, and, you know, for example, we've talked about reducing the number of bits of resolution in available time measurements uh, and or deliberately adding some timing jitter to the timing that JavaScript was able to read. So anyway, they, they said to assess the effectiveness of this approach, in this work, we seek to identify those JavaScript features which are essential for carrying out a cache-based attack. We develop a sequence of attacks which progressively decreasingly, uh, we, sorry, with progressively decreasing dependency on JavaScript features. So they, so they, they iterated on this problem um, doing it and then saying, okay, how can we eliminate this? How can we eliminate that? And they whittled this thing down to no JavaScript at all. They said culminating in the first browser-based side channel attack, which is constructed entirely from cascading style sheets and HTML and works even when script execution is completely blocked. We then show that avoiding JavaScript features makes our techniques architecturally agnostic, resulting in microarchitectural website fingerprinting attacks that work across hardware platforms, including Intel Core, AMD Ryzen, Samsung, Samsung it was that Exynos, uh, and Apple M1 architectures. They said as a final contribution. We evaluate our techniques in hardened browser environments, including the Tor browser, Dieter Fox, and Chrome Zero. We confirm that none of these approaches completely defends against our attacks. We further argue that the protections of Chrome Zero need to be more comprehensively applied and that the performance and user experience of Chrome Zero will be severely degraded if this approach is taken. Okay, so they have uh, <laughs> engineered a cross-browser, cross-platform, cross-architecture, script-free, side-channel browser fingerprinting hack. So I was curious to learn what they had done. And having done so, I would characterize it as one of the most god-awful hacks I have ever seen. Um, here's how they describe what they designed. They said, the attacker first includes, now, so this is, you know, you, you go to a site and you're, this is, thing is going to be used against you to fingerprint you. The attacker first includes in the CSS, you know, the cascading style sheet definition, an element from an attacker controlled domain forcing DNS resolution. The malicious DNS server logs the time of the incoming DNS request. The attacker then designs an HTML page 
that evokes a string search from CSS, effectively probing the cache. This string search is followed by a request for a CSS element that requires DNS resolution from the malicious server. Finally, the time difference between consecutive DNS requests corresponds to the time it takes to perform the string search, which serves as a proxy for cache contention. Okay, now that was as clear as mud to me, but unfortunately, they also provided an annotated snippet of HTM. Thank you, Leo. It's on the screen. So the HTML above on screen for those who are looking at it or in the show notes shows a code snippet, you know, just a standard HTML, uh, which implements this CSS, they call it the prime plus probe hack. Well, they, they didn't say hack, I did. Using CSS attribute selectors to perform the attack. So in this on-screen code, line nine defines a div with, from their text, a very long class name on the order of, is everybody sitting down? Two million characters. <laughs> oh. So the ellipsis oh, in there is is just to represent the fact that there would be two million characters here. Yes, that is a, shall we say, a heavily loaded <laughs> or overloaded ellipsis. How, how would yes. you even get two million characters in a file? Uh I guess I who even knew that was legal. I didn't, That's insane. I mean, yeah, a, a class name and what's so. Here's the hack, Leo. Is it's possible to use CSS selectors to do searches within class names, and that's what they've done. So if you look above, you'll see those those two style entries at line three and line five. So those are selectors which select some subtext out of the class name. And when the selector succeeds, then you can see it's loading a background image from a URL of, of some random domain name at attack.com. So anyway, so essentially what, what they've done... It's a buffer is, overflow, I would guess, right? Well, it, it, it is a... It is a... It is a, a Cache content based delay, oh. which is why I said it is this the mother oh, of all kludges. Clever. So the, yeah, well, it is clever. I'll give him that. <laughs> so, so then, the, so then, the, so after this, what they call the external div, this monster div with a class name of two mega characters, then they have some interior divs, which whose resolution, whose the, with IDs referring back up to. The selectors. So, in order to display the interior div, the 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 ID references the selector, which then uses this weird. I mean, I'd never even looked enough into CSS to know that you could have a selector which has a wild card which matches some piece of text in the parent div. But yes, you can. Anyway, I just it's powerful. That's pretty amazing. It is. Yeah. It really is powerful, and I can't. I mean, it makes your head spin to think about how you would actually use this when you weren't trying to create this ridiculous, you know, cache-based, cache content-based DNS lookup timing hack. Anyway, I mean, you know, these are the guys who transmitted crypto keys from, you know, the taps on the keyboard or, you know, people sneezing in the next room. I mean, they've done all this crazy stuff. So I guess we shouldn't put this one past them. So props to them. But uh, there was a, a little more breathless covered coverage in the tech press than I think this deserves. You know, they I, I could understand how they got there. They said, okay, we have JavaScript. Now let's remove this, let's remove that. I mean, basically they took everything out of it until there was nothing left but HTML and CSS and said, oh, look, it still works. We don't need JavaScript. Okay. <laughs>